and now it's time for the next tutorial, I think. Any uh, questions so far? Okay, two day long scenario of doing basic submarine operations. That could be pretty cool, but maybe warship, ships, surface warships. Let's go quickly with submarines. It's probably micromanaging just one submarine. And, uh, okay, sub v sub in exercise area one. Sub versus surface in B, in the uh, region marked B. Sub versus surface warship with the ASW helicopter in region C. And sub versus land. Uh, hunt for the Red October. Uh, I don't think there's a Red October mission, uh, but uh, I, there might be one in the, uh, the like, if, if someone's been uh, working on one. Uh, I'll, I'll get to the warship tutorial uh, right after this one. I'm, I'm going to kind of try and rush through it because it's just micromanaging one sub. And I'm going to focus on uh, sensors, I think. So here we are. A submarine near Hawaii. The USS North Carolina, which is a uh, Virginia-class submarine. So we could, uh, first off, when you have a, uh, a towed sonar array, Get these convergence zones, which are due to the to this, the state of the sea and the physics associated with uh, like uh, sonar ducting and such. There's just regions where you can detect aircraft. An Ohio class sub versus four Soviet SSNs in the polar ice cap scenario. I think I'd probably lose that. I I, I streamed a little bit of uh, one of the non-tutorial scenarios, and uh, I hate losing while I'm streaming. I'm just going to quickly go through this one. So we're going to hunt a submarine in Sector A. So there's a lot of specialty sensors on a submarine. We've got air, air radar, which uh, isn't very useful. You've got acoustic intercept. You've got uh, passive and active uh, sonars. You've got uh, surface search radar. You've got uh, this. This one was probably a uh, like a air warning radar, I think. You've got a bunch of different towed array sonars and basically a bunch of sensors, a bunch of weapons, a vertical launch array or a vertical launch system rather with tomahawks. We'll use that in the land attack part and uh, decoy launchers, magazines for the uh, for the four tubes up front, the four, uh, I think that's, I don't know, something like 20 inches or so, I don't know, uh, conversions from metric to imperial. These numbers are kind of hard to interpret, but it means we're stealthy. We are a stealthy submarine. We have a non-magnetic hull, which means we can't be detected by the magnetic anomaly detectors easily. Uh, we're shock resistant, which means nuclear uh, and, and death charges and nuclear death charges aren't as damaging. And we have p advanced propulsors, which means we can go real fast under the ocean. And we've got a nuclear reactor. So let's let's quickly get this one done. Since I gave it a cruise order, and like kind of it's a modern submarine, it's it's going to go pretty fast. Uh, manually order it to just over the layer. Uh, just over the layer means that uh, there's this uh, discontinuity in the vertical profile of temperature in the ocean. There's usually one uh, one layer called the hydrocline, uh, th thermocline rather, where uh, there's a distinct difference in water temperature between the upper layer and the bottom layer, and that leads to a difference in density, which leads to the sonar pulse being reflected. And that's that's where uh, like the, 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 the complicated interactions between sonar and water, sound and water, 
lead to regions where you can be uh, detected and not detected based on the, be the bending of sound waves under the ocean. And since I've only got one ship to, uh, to micromanage, I'm cranking up the time acceleration. So we're cruising in at 10 knots. I think I'm going to creep here for a bit, see if I can hear it. Oh. And I think I've located it right off the bat. It was probably randomly positioned within this region. And I'm glad I didn't go straight in because the toad array can't hear as well up front. And again, the uh, the the engagement area uh, is is important here as well because if I just fire a torpedo, this green circle denotes my underwater weapon range. It'll probably just be able to inch out of there. So what I'm going to do is get in their baffles. Actually, there's probably a good chance that this thing is not a very smart, not a very uh, effective sub. We've detected it on our uh, EQG-4A. 5A, rather. Which is the hull sonar. It's kind of uh, sonar that's along the sides of the submarine. So we last saw the contact three minutes ago here. I wonder if it heard us and then went to silent running to uh, to try and avoid us. Uh, yeah, the uh, the the toad arrays and mast and antenna such is is done automatically. So when you uh, when you surface, your it's kind of well not a surface, but when you go to periscope depth, it's assumed that you have your uh, radar intercept mast up and, and a bunch of things like that. Uh, you can control uh, when sensors radiate when they uh, send out pulses of sound energy or, or radar energy. So what's the depth of this guy? 118 feet. We're right under the layer, uh, right over the layer rather. So it's kind of in an intermediate depth above the layer. So I'm going to just go under the layer. Since I know where he is, he might not know where I am. And since I'm now under the layer, let's actually go really deep. We'll probably lose track of this guy. But since we're under the layer, he won't be able to see us. The, uh, the depth of the water is 161 feet, so we're basically hugging the bottom. The, uh, the layer uh, Probably not a. There's not a very strong layer. I, I don't really have a good sense of what the strength readout is, but uh, uh, there probably isn't a significant layer. Layers become a lot more important in much deeper waters. I think if this guy detected us, he'd be going faster and would have changed its depth. So I think we're still undetected. Uh, another good way to de uh, to see if we're detected or not is if there's a torpedo inbound on our location. And now we're uh, we're approximately let's call this guy um, the SSN number two is a perfectly fine name. It starts out as a goblin, just an undetected anomaly underwater or like something something underwater. And then it gets classified as my sensors are able to uh, detect it better, determine the frequency that are coming off of its engines and its reactor and the propeller, most of all. And that's also how I detect uh, its speed, is uh, through frequency analysis of the, uh, the sound of the propeller. Yeah, I'm just uh, making sure that this guy can't escape my torpedoes kind of on an intercept course, based on its course. We're going about the same speed. And I kind of want to get to a much close, a little bit closer than this. 
So I'm checking my torpedo tubes right now, making sure that there's the Mark 48 torpedoes. I don't have a Tomahawk loaded in one of these uh, by accident, which is pretty annoying when you have to wait for uh, for your guys to uh, to reload torpedoes. And I'm going to set this as the reload priority. So uh, they'll reload the they'll prioritize reloading torpedoes over anything else. I think they do that automatically, but uh, better safe than sorry. And so, so the North Carolina can target this guy. Let's give him two torpedoes. And then we're going to sprint away as soon as possible. As soon as we fire, we'll sprint. You can control torpedoes, and uh, there's no simulation, there's no modeling of the torpedo wires being cut, uh, which which would happen if you sprinted away. But, uh, oh, there go the torpedoes. And so I can actually modify where they're going. Though I think my, my crew will actually... Uh, Kind of control it. I just tried to do that. I think I would have to unassign these uh, torpedoes from their current uh, target, but I don't really want to do that. My crew will automatically steer the torpedoes into the target. There's a good chance that these guys will do a bearing only attack on me, and you can see the the speed has kicked up a notch. He's uh, he's changed his depth, and it's probably changed his course as well as an increased speed. It's been 10 seconds since I saw him. These torpedoes are cruising in at 50 knots, and uh, it's time for me to get out of here. And since I'm going to be going this direction anyways, I might as well go that way. Uh, as deep as possible is perfectly fine. And flank. I'm going to alternate between going at flank and loitering speed, so I can listen to this, uh, uh, the torpedoes, and I can listen to any battle damage assessment uh, that... Uh, that might be generated. Hopefully I won't cavitate. I'll, I'll slow down if I'm cavitating. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Showtime. Uh, it's uh, $80, uh, $80 well spent. Welcome to the club. So this guy has done some maneuvers. I'm also uh, make turns for uh, for a high speed, so I'm I'm not able to hear him. And I I want to change my course before uh, before slowing down. I actually really want to change my bearing. Most of all, that's actually a good idea. Is change my bearing as quickly as possible, and then. Go this way. There's actually not much of a... Yeah. Not the best disengagement angle. Yeah, the sh uh, Panze, uh, the uh, the Schickfalls are uh, pretty cool. Especially nuclear Schickfalls. Uh, nuclear torpedoes really change the whole submarine game. When one Soviet submarine can take out a carrier battle group with one torpedo... It's uh, kind of a humbling thing to watch. It's, uh, I, I think that was the Soviet plan all along, was uh, a, naval, uh, a naval engagement, have lots of submarines with nuclear weapons, which can achieve mission kills. Even, even a, a miss with a nuclear weapon will achieve mission kills on nearly everything nearby, and will knock lots of aircraft out of the sky too. So we're traveling much faster. You can see the active sonars now that we've reached the end of our uh, uh, plotted course for the torpedoes. Their active sonars are on, and they're going to execute a uh, a search pattern. And I guess I shouldn't sprint away right away, because uh, uh, these might miss pretty easily. Kind of the torpedoes are on their own. And we're cavitating. So 26 knots is too fast. 
Yeah, cavitating kind of really gives away your position. So I'm going to go back down to creep and see if I can hear anything. If this guy's sprinting, I should be able to hear him. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Showtime, you'll... Uh, I, I had the exact same feeling, even though I had the uh, the beta installed on my computer. It's, uh, it's, it's something to have uh, have the real game right there. Yeah, the install takes a while, I think, cause, because it uh, decompresses stuff. Uh, decompresses a lot of the, uh, uh, what's it called? Like, height data for the planet. But yeah, it takes quite a while. And based on this, doesn't... S I think he's trying to hide. Because I can't hear him, I, and he's not sprinting. Otherwise, I probably would be able to hear him. The water's not too deep. So if, if you go really deep, you won't cavitate when you're at flank. These torpedoes aren't doing like a snake pattern, so I think they've uh, they've got their target. If I had to guess. <clears throat> oh. There it is. It's it's sprinting at twenty five knots. I think now that they, they, they probably started sprinting when they heard the torpedoes radar uh, sonar. So there's two torpedoes here. Hopefully I'll be able to reach him before the uh, the range of the torpedoes. I probably should have snuck closer. And since they're sprinting at me and I haven't picked up a torpedo, I might actually sprint after them. But uh, it's good to make sure that my bearing isn't... Uh, like, uh, the real response to a torpedo coming at you is to fire one right back down the same bearing. Maybe even a spread. So I'm just trying to change my bearing as much as possible before uh, pursuing. Oh yeah, that's true, I am in their baffles. Yeah. Like, I'm right behind them, they're going way too fast. One of the reasons why I'm changing my bearing, though, is if there is a torpedo coming at me. But I probably would have heard it by now. So, uh... Time to pursue. I probably have a faster submarine. <laughs> I don't think ramming's uh, uh, modeled. I wonder if I can modify their speed for a, for a longer range. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna screw with them. This kind of bar under here is the amount of fuel left. I wonder if that's accurate for torpedoes. Actually, let's let's take a look. The Mark 48 Mod 7, Mark 48 Mod 7 has a max range of six nautical miles and a max speed of 65 knots. So I I could modify their speed. Uh, six nautical miles. Oops. Where is that? Uh, what what is that key combination for measuring? Okay, so the green circle was the uh, six nautical mile figure. Yeah, this this uh, this might very be uh, very easily be close. Yeah, Control D for the uh, the bearing uh, ruler, which is really useful for uh, uh, figuring out how to have the most planes on top of a target at once. And. Uh, Get them, uh, get them there approximately at the same time. <laughs> I'm just gonna time accelerate because there's just one, one unit. 25 knots. I can make 32 knots. So I should be able to close the distance. Uh, to clear the plotted course, uh, you just hit the uh, plot course button twice, like F3, F3, and that clears your course. 
I think you can also press U for unassign, maybe. Okay, no, uh, it keeps your current course, but that that you press U to unassign from missions. Yeah, if I get torpedoed uh, right now, this uh, this would be pretty embarrassing. I I, I was playing one of these scenarios from uh, where uh, you had four American cruisers shelling North Vietnamese positions in 1972, and I accidentally lost a uh, destroyer, got the Newport News all banged up. Uh, it wasn't pretty. Now I'm playing easy scenarios so I can uh, focus on uh, on kind of presenting the gameplay and not not playing my best. I think I got this guy. I'm pretty sure I got him. And uh, here I turned on the data links view. And these guys are still being actively steered by guys here, even though we're going 32 knots. I, th I think modeling when the cables are going to be cut, like the, uh, the communication cables, uh, is, is on the to-do list. I think I got him. Awesome. So exercise area B. Uh, data links view draws these orange lines when there's a data link between two units. It's not just communication, like uh, it, it, it assumes that every, every unit is in communication, but things like uh, steerable ANRAM missiles, uh, torpedoes with guidance wires, that sort of thing is modeled by this communication. Uh, the data link view. Yeah, linkage to weapons is right. Yeah. And so this torpedo is just going to continue doing its thing. So we succeeded at the first part of the scenario. And it is now time to cruise up north. Uh... Better not pick me up. Yeah, the uh, the dipping sonar surface ship I think is in uh, the C section. I wonder how they uh, how they named the uh, reference points. I I haven't found a, na a way to uh, to rename them. Probably just like there probably is a way. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, in the tutorial uh, briefing, uh, the dipping sonar is in the third one. This guy I'm going to try and sync with torpedoes and save cruise missiles. Do I have any anti-ship cruise missiles? Because that makes shooting ships a lot easier. Land attack missiles. I wonder, we're, the reason why we're not cavitating is because we're so deep. We're pretty damn deep. And the, the water pressure itself is preventing the little cavitation bubbles from forming. I wonder if I can use tactical tomahawks to attack... Uh... No, it seems Lance... Whoops, I just noticed something in the log. Oh, that was just the Mark 48 running out of fuel. I'm going to just come to periscope depth for a moment and see if I can hear any radars. And I can hear a radar. So, uh, there is a
Well, that's not very helpful. It doesn't really know down where it is. Okay, back to, uh, to cranking it underwater. Yeah, there's there. I, I've enabled uh, sending links, and uh, I I don't know if it it just hasn't updated. Like, uh, the the default settings for Twitch aren't perfect. It doesn't it doesn't save videos by default, and it uh, it deletes links by default. I've I've enabled them, but I I think I'd probably have to restart. And I, I'd like to do this all in one one big uh, one big video. So the ship's probably in this portion of the uh, the sector of interest. Since I'm uh, below the layer, I can uh, I can run pretty fast without being heard. That's that's the uh, the uh, thermocline is one of the more important aspects of uh, submarine warfare, uh, and that's why the presets for uh, altitude just over the layer means that your passive sonars, uh, your towed sonar array rather, is under the layer. And I think surface ships, when possible, will try and get their uh, towed arrays underneath the layer to try and take a glance down there. Oh yeah, I shouldn't forget to uh, zigzag. You're right. You're right. And I'm gonna come back to cruise, uh, maybe a loiter speed. See, just over the uh, layer, because pretty much by definition, a surface ship is uh, over the layer. So I'm uh, hoping to be able to detect it with. Uh, by kind of peeking up out of the layer. Yeah, it does make sense that surface ships will uh, try and get their towed array under there. So I'm coming up. Oop. Medium frequency sonars are being emitted by this uh, the skunk. So I've localized it significantly further. Yeah, there should be an indicator that shows the speed. It's uh, it's kind of irksome, really, to cavitate when you're not expecting to cavitate, because cavitation just gives away your position like uh, nothing else. Like, uh, even pinging away at active sonar, uh, it's, uh... I do know that there are TV cameras, uh, like, uh, aircraft with TV cameras, like marine surveillance setups, uh, loadouts, can pick up your periscope. There's also periscope-seeking radars. And, uh, they can also see submarines based on sea state. So if it's if the sea is very calm and you're at periscope depth, it's not too hard to see a submarine. So uh uh yeah, goulash with your uh, zigzag idea has really narrowed this guy down. Medium frequency sonar. Haven't identified him yet and and also identifying targets based on what they're emitting. Is really helpful for determining where you can, uh, how you can sneak up on them. Yeah, it's actually even uh, a bit annoying to be picked up just by being near the surface and having aircraft pick you up. There was a bug where uh, the ultimate uh, surface finding uh, unit was uh, an F-14 for a while, like anything with a camera. Uh, but that bug was squashed long ago been uh, like when I started uh, working as a beta tester it, the game was just about perfect at that time there were just some very odd edge cases some weird behavior 
And uh, one of the things that I like with the game is it's uh, like the UI interface is so much. It's miles ahead of uh, of Harpoon, which is just about as old as I am, really. So every time he pings, I get a good bearing on him. And uh, now I've got a heading and a speed. He's crawling. He's creeping. So he's uh, he's kind of expecting me, I think. He's on an intercept course. I wonder if he can actually see me. So I've changed course. And it doesn't look like he can. Yeah, that's true. Anything's better than Harpoon. Like Windows 3.1. Like Harpoon was going for a Windows 3.1 look. It was probably uh, revolutionary back in the day. But uh, yeah, the uh, the command UI doesn't have... Uh, like the game doesn't have major flaws, which I really appreciate. It's... Uh, there's There's also quite a bit of like there's a lot of things that could be uh, just made by the scenario editor, which is one of the reasons why Sandbox is so fun, is you can just make things up as you go along. Yeah, I think one of the... Uh, I actually probably can't mention anything about what's currently being beta tested. I, I shouldn't mention anything. But uh, mouse zoom leg... I know is a high priority. It uh, not many beta testers actually experience the like some people are ex seem to be experiencing the leg. Uh, I'm not actually, but this is a very simple scenario with pretty much two units, probably five units total. But uh, yeah. I can tell you for a fact that the devs are are they're not taking a break, even though they deserve one. They're uh, they're not taking a break. So those uh, Mark Forty Eight torpedoes had a pretty significant range. So if this guy's continuing at five knots after, I think it's an hour per nautical mile or something like that. Like one knot is a nautical mile per hour. So after the 60th, I sometimes get an Excel sheet and plot these things out and figure out where craft could be based on uh, timing and such, but I'm, I rarely bother. I probably can pop up and attack this guy and then sprint out of the way of his, uh, of his retaliation. Oh, he's changed course. Let's go with three torpedoes. Actually, no, let's go with two. I've only got uh, ten left. I think C will be the hardest one. Like the uh, the C section of the uh, tutorial. This is also the first time I've played this uh, tutorial as well. I, I, I mostly just play sandbox, just setting up uh, neat scenarios like uh, an opposed landing in China with nuclear weapons and then it just gets really absurd. Okay, torpedoes have been fired this guy is changing course and has been positively identified because I got close enough with the uh, uh, with my passive sonars and probably because he kicked up the uh, speed to <clears throat> speed to max I've been able to identify him as a Type 52 Lu Hu, which sounds like a Chinese sort of uh, destroyer. Whoa, that's a lot of a uh, lot of sensors. Kind of like uh, our like Burke class, I would assume, without a vertical launch.
Okay, let's uh, let's sprint the hell out of here. I'm gonna sprint this way and then follow. Something like that. I don't want to cavitate. Even though he knows my bearing. And so, like, you, you might have just noticed uh, there, the I, my solution changed its bearing, and the torpedoes were guided to the new solution. So it's worthwhile to, to sprint and then uh, creep for a bit, to re -update, to update the uh, the torpedoes uh, targeting and uh... oops that's 7 p.m. I can safely ignore my boss <laughs> yeah there certainly is a theme in uh, in my scenarios uh, I, I really like nuclear weapons. Uh, I've, I like them from Harpoon days, and uh, Harpoon didn't have a good modeling of nuclear weapons. But, uh... Yeah, I, I, I started uh, streaming precisely at 5, so I could uh, log off of work computers and uh, log on to uh, fun. I work as a, a sonar data analyst, so uh, I kind of mix fun with work. So torpedoes are giving a given an intercept course on this bogey, and I'm gonna uh, with this uh, skunk, and I'm just gonna accelerate time because I think I've got a kill on him. You can see that they're they're changing the position where the sonars uh, sonars take over uh, the torpedo sonars take over as the ambiguity of the target increases. <laughs> yeah, nuke the terrorists to nuke their uh, to the nuke their weapons. A lot of scenarios become really simple if you're uh, if you give yourself a bunch of ICBM silos. And uh, and nuclear doctrine, the ability to just nuke whoever you'd like. But that's uh, can't always uh, nuke your enemies. Sometimes you have to kill them, kill them softly. I'm just gonna come up, see if there's anything uh, chasing me, and I probably have killed this guy. I think I'm still below the layer, so I don't know precisely where he is. And I think the torpedoes have been given, uh, or have been allowed to start turning and like doing a snake or a circle uh, search pattern based on this uh, this entry right here. So I got to the middle of the target ambiguity zone, and the torpedoes start searching. He's probably up here, so the torpedoes... I was hoping one torpedo would turn left, one torpedo would turn right. That'd be the way I'd uh, program him. I've been wondering about uh, database modifications for this game, because the, uh, the database is a SQLite database. I've, I've kind of peeked inside of it. Uh, it has a pretty set format, so I, I haven't modified it myself. But uh, it's just neat looking at all the... Uh, all the different things that are modeled, all the different uh, weapons, all the different platforms, sensors, everything. I, I think it's uh, like it's it's a command database. Like I, I don't think it's precisely SQLite. Uh, but uh, I've, I've opened it using uh, like a SQLite database program. 
and uh, you can you can kind of peek inside. I, I I think there's like additional things that command puts in the database. I I haven't tried modifying it yet. Uh, the the scenario editor allows you to make modifications to the database without actually modifying the database, which is uh, you kind of have to play with XML. It's not my favorite thing to do to write XML stuff. But sometimes you just have to strap ICBMs onto uh, uh, C-130s. And uh, and nuke somebody with them. And I, These torpedoes have not picked them up. That is actually... Ah! So he ran away. And since I still have uh, the wires on these guys, denoted by the orange uh, orange lines here, I can uh, send one in at full and one in at cruise to a uh, intercept. I should have kept uh, creeping. I could have kept my my crew could have kept directing the uh, torpedoes automatically, and uh, I probably would have killed them by now. There we go. I'm still picking up him up primarily by his... He's actively pinging. He's also driving pretty fast, so that's that's how I'm probably picking him up, is just through, uh, through sonar. Uh, passive sonar. Not just active intercept. Active intercept gives you a bearing. Not, not a great range. There we go. Yeah, I cancelled their courses since I've got a great solution on them. The torpedo should hit. One going at full. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that YouTube. The uh, the Minuteman being launched out the uh, the back of a C-130 or or some other kind of aircraft. And yeah, that's that's the kind of YouTube I've got on repeat. Yeah, talk about uh, airborne alert. But this guy's dead. Even though he did give me a, a run, like he uh, he cleared out of there pretty quick. Yeah, I think this six, uh, whoever said that earlier in chat, it's uh, the six. Uh, oh yeah, I, I read the Cold War thread all the time. But yeah, the, the six nautical mile range is probably not the it's not the actual range of the torpedo. It's just something for the AI, like a good engagement range. And boom. Flooding as determined by uh, passive sensors on my submarine. Sometimes it tells you. I was kind of expecting it to say, like, certain sensor detected metal damage assessment. And so this is why I'm glad I, uh, I sent two torpedoes. Is Actually, there's a, there's a minimum amount of flooding. It could be that they, uh, they use something like a uh, Chinese Dixie. Uh, something to spoof the torpedo, and it just damaged them a bit. They're going at 10 knots, so they still have uh, power. So they're still trying to get out of there. And I'm going to... I'm going to keep... I'm going to just watch this torpedo, because like, either it's going to hit, or he's going 10 knots, I can I can chase him down. And boom, got him. On to the uh, on to the hardest one. I still haven't gotten a battle damage assessment on this guy yet, but uh, the trigger, uh, the mission trigger fired, so uh, I'm quite. Happy just cruising along to the next objective. Oh yeah, they've got great years. It's the uh, Virginia class. It's uh, the most advanced submarine we got. Except uh, the Sea Wolf, I've heard, is a, like technically a better sub, but Virginia is kind of a a, sea, a cheaper Sea Wolf, a replacement for the Los Angeles class.
one of the uh, things I like about this game is mission kills. Uh, like, you you don't have to completely destroy an enemy. You just have to eliminate their capacity of doing anything, like taking out all their radars, uh, causing enough fires on their uh, craft to uh, make them unable to do anything, and uh, things of that matter. So, onward, we've lost the contact with the previous boat. And so this one, there's probably a helicopter flying about. Uh, Russian submarines generally have anti-air weapons, like uh, mast-mounted uh, uh, man pads, and uh, American boats don't. So again, going to uh, change my bearings, zigging and zagging, to achieve a bit of a solution, and creeping just over the layer. Well, it depends on the uh, the SAM. Like, uh, some SAMs won't fire without an illuminating radar, so if you take out all the illuminating radars, you won't be able to fire SAMs. Uh, some SAMs don't require uh, illuminating radars, and those can be fired from just the, uh, the Mark I eyeball. Most weapons can't do a bearing-only attack. I've been... Uh, I've been considering requesting that ICBMs be allowed to do bearing-only attacks. Yeah, yeah, the SA-2 needs illumination, and I think it even needs uh, terminal illumination, like there's no active radar seeking head on it. But it all depends on uh, the nation, the different variants of the, the missiles. There's just so much detail in this game. Like, uh, facilities, let's go with Soviet Russia. Got every... This is the uh, post-1980 database, kind of keep an eye on this. And uh, let's go for SA-2, like the early one from 65 onward, needs this one because there's no illumin- oh, never mind, this is a radar illuminator. So this, if you take out the Fansong vehicle here, uh, the SA-2s become useless. I played a sub-mission versus a full anti-subgroup yet? Uh, I can't say that I have. Um, well, I, I I haven't without, uh, like, I, I usually use nuclear weapons in uh, in sub-missions. They, they are pretty good at hunting you down. I'm, I'm particularly not very good at the game itself. Uh, like, I, I wouldn't make a great submarine skipper. But uh, it's they, they do hunt you down. And you can really see that when you set up your own missions, uh, they they really will jump on you. And it's it's even a bit of a struggle to make, uh, say, if you have a whole bunch of P3s on a maritime patrol uh, mission, they'll all jump down the throat of one sub when it's detected. One way to, to get around that is to break up your patrol sectors. So it's not all your P3s jumping on one sub, it's maybe one or two. Yeah, the uh, the editor is is amazingly powerful. It's uh, it's it's also a lot of fun to just keep playing a scenario. You set up something, you play it to the end, and then you think of something pl like something plausible that could happen. Like uh, if you're fighting Vietnam as the Philippines. Uh, like I I also like researching things, like uh, looking up the Philippines Air Force and the. Uh, Yeah, yeah, lo like the scenarios that, uh, like, scenar most of what a, a scenario author will do is set up AI uh, scripted missions. And uh, they, they have the same tools that you do during the, uh, uh, during normal operation of the game, like defining areas and setting up different, uh, different missions. Like, for example, air intercept, which is planes will sit on the tarmac waiting to, uh, to see something in the region of interest. 
uh, patrol, all the different types. Uh, some patrols will focus on anti-air weapons, some on submarines, uh, different types of things that can, uh, 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 different types of surface ships to go after. Uh, support is mostly just like for things like AWACS. Uh, they they do have probability inclusion settings in the uh, action editor, uh, and dynamic boxes can be done like like for example if I if this North Carolina was a carrier group, what I would do is make reference points relative rotating bearing to USS North Carolina. And so these, if I change my course, these will rotate with me. And so this is how you would set up like a dipping sonar mission for helicopters to patrol ahead of a specific boat or a, or a group. And they, like helicopters will go out, uh, out front of the path and uh, drop their sonars and go on to another random position inside the patrol area. You can have, uh, they can also be fixed. They don't have to rotate with you. So if you want like a threat bearing where you have a bar cap set up with lots of fighters protecting you from specific air bases or specific bearings, uh, and you can assign missions, and missions will dynamically move with the reference points, which is pretty cool. The same with support missions, like uh, you don't have to keep moving your support mission reference points to keep up with a carrier for uh, AWACS and tanker support. It'll just automatically follow. And I think uh, something like like uh, like the like most of the good scenarios have lots of relative reference points and uh, scenario editors, especially if they want to surprise you. Um, I, I I've always had the a slight suspicion that they attach reference points for the enemy side to your own boats, but uh, I, I don't think. Basically, I've I've lost a lot of times playing the missions, uh, the scenarios that come with the game. So uh, I, I always kind of jump to the conclusion that the AI is cheating, but it probably isn't cheating. It's uh, it's just kicking my ass. One thing that's fun with the mission editor is jumping from side to side and seeing if you're detected or not. I was actually kind of expecting to see the boat by now, the, uh, the ship that I want to take out. Huh. I wonder why it adjusted the course that way. Maybe it was trying to go around this ridge or something. Yeah, if, if you ever find out how to rename reference points, uh, it's obviously possible, because like C1, C2, C3, C4, uh, it's... I just don't know the key combination. Yeah, stealth aircraft are a really interesting thing in this game. And uh, they're really fun to play around with. Oop, there's that helicopter. Probably being intercepted, like it's it's dipping its sonar in. Let's, uh, let's see if I can win this scenario. I have a feeling it's just something as simple as uh, just the right key combination. kind of wish every key combination had an associated button. Most of them do. But things like U, which is really essential, doesn't really have a... Okay, they're getting closer to me. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that they might have seen me. Dive deep. And kinda creep in. Mission dialogue. I could see it uh, easily being in there somehow. Is that from the uh, the manual? Let's give that a shot. Let's rename one. Oh, that was simple. 
Okay, yeah, it's just uh uh Okay, just make sure that you've only got one selected. Yeah, that that's that's exceedingly simple. It was too simple. Too simple for me. Take a quick look. And I've got a bearing. Based it's a passive uh passive acquisition. It's probably there-ish. Gonna zig this way and then that way. I do know that sometimes passive sensors can detect hovering helicopters very near your air, uh, your submarine. But I think this is just a active intercept, but there's no little like it's usually when there's an active sensor, there's white text on top, uh, the A N Y one. Okay, yeah, that's the acoustic intercept. It's dipping its sonar in, and. Uh, I'm gonna get this guy. At this point, like I might as well just fire a whole bunch of bearing only torpedoes down this uh this vector. But I think I'm gonna just uh oh uh detailed fire control. Uh what it does is things like um it's really important in the Cold War database in the but database from like nineteen fifty onwards, is it does individual uh, radar illuminated fire control like it slaves radars to guns uh, so it, it models slaving radars to guns it's uh, it, I, I've never noticed a slowdown associated with it but I think in big like lots of gun scenarios from the 50s where the main weapons of C to C like ship to ship combat are uh, torpedoes and guns uh, you get the radar guided guns also for anti-aircraft uh, which I think is really where it, uh, where it radar slaving your guns to your radars really shines. It makes the well, it makes I, I wouldn't say it makes the game harder. It uh, I think the reason why they have it as a toggle is that it might make the game slower. And if you say, uh, for example, if you uh, have all your radars knocked out by radiation seeking missiles. Uh, your guns will shoot less accurately, so it attack it, it hurts the AI, like it hurts the other opposing team, it hurts your team. Uh, it it makes radars important for gunnery. I could be completely off base. Uh, I'm I'm probably I'm just going from memory from uh, from the beta forms. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't solve reference points with nuclear weapons, so uh, yeah, it, you can't really uh, use nuclear weapons with reference points. So, uh, so yeah, I never really looked into reference points too much. I was expecting to see this target a little better, like uh, get a better solution on it. I don't think they've detected me because I'd expect them to kick up their speed. And probably steer towards me, and I, I think I'd see the helicopters getting closer and closer. If they do dip near me because I'm I'm at a shallow depth, they will get me. Like they'll be able to detect me. Oh, I think I might. Um. This guy probably picked me up. That'd be my guess. This is one of those cases where the uh, the area ambiguity setting makes a difference. Uh, since it's kind of an ambiguous target, like most, it's most likely outside of this range. So ignore ambiguity, if that makes a difference. No.
I know that that does something somewhere of that sort. And they've got me. They're real close. Bloody hell. I shall do bearing only attacks. And as soon as those fire, I'm going to sprint under the lair directly at them. And so torpedoes have been fired. Go to flank speed as deep as possible. Helicopter will probably get a torpedo off at me. So I should listen for that every once in a while. Okay, the helicopter stopped dipping in this region. Go back to flank. My last assumption is that it's heading south, changing course rapidly, so I'm going to head south. Oh, yeah, there's the torpedo, and I'm going to lose. That was dumb. The submarine's engaged defensive, so it's actually ignoring my course, my plotted course. And, um, oh! Okay, I, I spoofed the uh, torpedo with a sonar jammer. I used a sonar a torpedo decoy as well. I think I've only got two of those. I, I guess I used one of these expendable weapons here. And another torpedo. And I'm engaged defensive again. So hopefully I survived that one. Once again, uh, the decoys worked. The torpedoes are uh, active. I can still steer them because I've got the data links. Yeah, there's no modeling, like, like I mentioned earlier, there's no modeling of cutting the wires yet. I think he's probably way out here. And it's going after the last known position. But that's 10 minutes old. Damn, I was hoping to actually see the bloody boat. This is this ambiguity box is. Oh, there it is. So it's right on this bearing. Saw it for a moment right there. So uh, I'm hoping it's still there, even though oh, yeah, that's that's probably where it actually is. It was bad for it to uh, these torpedoes to assume that uh, like it was spurious contact there. And there's still a helicopter that I'm a little worried about. I'm 
able to set these guys back onto automatic uh, course adjustments. And so they're all on intercept courses based on uh, last known information. There's that helicopter again. But I think I've got this guy. So some snapshots down a bearing based off of me being scared of a helicopter uh, hopefully will win the scenario for me. The fast boat. But I think I got him. Boom. And boom. And just for good measure, I missed. Okay, in any case, that guy is not having a good day. Helicopter's still dangerous. I'm going to fire one more torpedo at it. Oh wait, that's way out of range. What am I doing? The, tor the helicopter, I think, dropped two torpedoes, which is, I think, a uh, uh, enough. Like, I, I think it's expended its payload. I'm gonna just uh, sprint after this guy. And it eventually sank. And so one to two uh, Tomahawk cruise missiles at this building right here. And I can do that probably from the goddamn west coast to the states. Just a little bit off the coast, so uh, this will be a relatively easy target. A tactical Tomahawk and a land attack missile. I'm actually not going to use my vertical launch. Like, these are the vertical launch guys. These are ones for my magazines. So, uh, you, use, you, you should use your... Uh, oh, can you just surface and shoot a man pad at the helo? Uh, no, because I am a American sub, and we don't really have uh, man pads on American subs. That's a, that's a Ruski thing. I've got no man pads at all in the, uh, in the loadout. A lot of Russian subs, I think... The majority of Russian subs do have man pads. Uh, but uh, American doctrine kind of assumes that you'll have control of the sky. Like, uh, Amer there's a lot of American carriers. There's not many... Uh... Will the terrain affect the T-LAMs? Uh, yes, they'll, they'll, they'll do terrain. Uh, they'll, they'll go over the land, like they'll avoid the land. And shooting uh, tactical tomahawks or any sort of tomahawk or any sort of missile that you can uh, direct its motion, especially if it's a skimmer, like one that'll uh, stay as low as possible at all times, uh, it's best to send it down valleys to minimize the amount of the possibility of it being intercepted by radar or being hit by radar. Uh, so terrain does affect the the, the missiles. It they they won't accidentally crash into it. I've never seen uh, things accidentally crash into anything. And so the right now they're going to reload. Oops, don't want. I just completely missed the whole reloading part, where uh, uh, torpedoes are taken off the. Uh... Oh, one neat thing about the reload reload priority is I didn't use anything from the vertical launch system. They unloaded a, tor a torpedo, put in a land attack missile fired off the land attack missile. Instead of reloading a land attack missile or a tactical tomahawk, they reloaded a torpedo, which is one of the, like, the reason why you set reload priorities like that way. Oh yeah, Dangerous Waters was, uh, it's a very frustrating game. This game, to launch two tomahawks, you just tell it which tomahawks you want to launch, like from the magazines or from your vertical launch system and your targets. And it takes care of the rest. And you can redirect. I think the 
Both of these guys you can redirect in flight. Oh, no, not this guy. Okay, yeah, it's the tactical tomahawk that you can uh, you can steer. It's the land attack missile that is programmed, and you can't do anything with it. Huh. You can even loiter. That might be a bug. It shouldn't loiter at zero knots. Whatever, I'm too lazy to submit a bug report tonight. And so you just cancel the course to get it back on uh, automatic interceptive targets. And then this scenario will be done. I love scenarios that combine every aspect of naval warfare. Like submarines firing tactical tomahawks, and if you had, like, I don't know, seals or something that needed to wait for the tactical tomahawks to come in, or tomahawks kind of loitering, waiting for targets, and then smashing into them. Uh, drones being used to just chill out over uh, for, for long durations, longer than any, uh, any human pilot aircraft could. And uh, there's just, it's such a complicated thing. Um, does it actually slow to zero knots? Let's try it. It's getting pretty slow. Maybe that it's it could be it modeling uh boom. Yeah, it does have satellites. I'll I'll just uh, quickly final score is 4. I think a 4 is like if it's a major victory, 4 is the high score you can get. Like I did use maybe one or two too many torpedoes. And maybe one or two too many tomahawks, or one too many. No, I didn't use. I, I only used the right amount of tomahawks, but I did use a lot of torpedoes. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll quickly show you guys uh, the satellites if, if you're interested. They're you have to kind of craft a scenario to make them really useful. <laughs> 